So, you want to make a game for the PS Vita, but you don't know where to start. Well, you come to the right place. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe to help with the channel. So, when it comes to developing games for the Vita, you have quite a few options. The first option is the engine route, meaning using a pre-made game engine to develop your game. You have Unity, which is considered wares, and sits in a... Um, let's just say a legal gray area. You have Game Maker, which has a few different export options, but if you want to keep it legal, you can use Rin's Yo-Yo Loader. The simplest method would be to export your game as an Android game and then add it to the loader. That way, you don't have to worry about swapping assets. I myself may have a weird Game Maker project coming to the Vita at the end of the year. Another one. Another one. Another one. The downside of Unity and Game Maker is they aren't as well optimized for the Vita as programming a native app in Vita SDK. However, if you aren't making something that's extremely demanding or just want a simple tool to use, those are options to get you up and running quickly. Just know that I don't approve the use of wares, so don't expect me to get into any detail about the Unity process. The next option is RPG Maker 2000 and 2003. Both of these game engines can be used in conjunction with Rin's port of Easy RPG. Now, I've never used RPG Maker, but I do know that it's always been marketed as an easy to use game engine to create RPGs. So, if your plans are to make the next great JRPG, or maybe even a Western RPG, look into the engine. After that, we have the Beats of Rage platform, also known as BOR. BOR allows you to create beat em ups in the style of Streets of Rage. I've never used this either, so I can't really say how simple or complex this engine actually is. However, the engine is very cross platform. I remember playing BOR on both my original Xbox and Dreamcast back in the day. We also have fantasy consoles in the way of the Pico 8 emulator. Pico 8 is a very simple fantasy console based around the specs somewhere between, I think, the Atari 2600 and Game Boy Color. The games are usually very simple, but I've seen things such as Doom ports, which are pretty cool. I've played around with the platform before, and I can honestly say it's pretty fun. There are a ton of YouTube channels that feature tutorials on the platform, so if you're interested, you should check those out. Just don't expect to make anything on the scale of the actual Vita platform or modern consoles. Then there's Game Boy Studio, also known as GB Studio. Now, GB Studio does not export directly to the Vita. However, the Vita does have multiple Game Boy emulators. So if you always want to make a Game Boy game and then enjoy that game on your Vita, look into Game Boy Studio. The last simple engine option is Godot. I've not used the Godot build for the Vita, so I'm unsure if any features are missing in the capabilities of the engine so your mileage may vary. However, it does exist, so if Godot is more of your speed, you should go check it out. Then we have Lua Player Plus, also known as LPP, developed by Rin. Personally, this is my favorite starting point for anyone who has programming experience but doesn't want to deal with Vita SDK. I've made two games using Lua Player Plus, Superhero Chronicles and Galactic Federation. The Lua interpreter runs well, and I honestly don't think it gets used enough. So, if you have programming experience, or if you want to learn how to code, check it out. Next, we have the Vita SDK options. These options will require that you install Vita SDK on your machine, and understand C or C++. I know that there's support for Python as well, but I've never used it, since I don't program in Python. My personal favorite option with Vita SDK is Vita 2D. It's the simplest way to get things running on the platform, and honestly reminds me a lot of the mono game drawing system. My original hand cannon prototype used Vita 2D, along with my other game, A Super Small Shmup. I also have quite a few unreleased projects that use this as well. Next, we have SDL, which again is another solid choice for a framework. What makes SDL even better is the ability to port the game easily to other platforms. After that, we have Vita GL, which is a port of OpenGL for the Vita, which is a bit complex for people who don't have an understanding of OpenGL. If you're interested in using Vita GL, which is the renderer that I use for the modern version of Hand Cannon, I recommend you check out OpenGL tutorials online, purchase a book, or look into a Udemy course. After that, review some of the OpenGL samples and Vita projects. Raylib is another option for Vita SDK. I haven't used it before, but I've heard really great things about the framework. I've also read over some of the documentation, and it's another framework that reminds me a lot of Monogame. I believe the Vita version is also capable of 3D as well. Then we have the various engines ported by various developers, such as the Doom engine, various id tech engines, and the build engine. All these engines can be used to create mods or entirely new games in those engines. 
also known as Total Conversions. Again, I've never used any of these engines, but judging by all the great games that were created in each engine, they're all more than capable of producing great games on the Vita. I know there are probably a couple of things that I'm missing, such as some of the visual novel engines, but if anyone has any suggestions, please go ahead and leave those in the comments for everyone else who's interested in developing for the Vita. As I've said before, I'm not a tutorial channel, so if you are interested in learning more about any of these engines, look to YouTube as there's a lot more material on most of these items. However, if you do want to learn more about Lua Player Plus, I did write a tutorial about seven or so years ago, which you can find on my Island Games GitHub page, along with a demo. Just know no matter what option you choose, you can develop something cool. So that's it for now. Thank you for your time and thanks for watching.